Have you ever wondered how to secure your financial future? Join us in this episode as we explore key financial concepts with Mr. Rick Shively. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting your financial journey, this episode is your roadmap to financial freedom. Stay tuned for valuable insights and practical tips that can transform your financial outlook on this episode of Coffee with Tea. So please, stick around and enjoy the show. friends and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host Tanya Tan and I'm excited because I'm going to be talking to Mr. Rick Shively today and we're going to talk about financial literacy and how your money works. So without me taking too much time, I want to welcome Mr. Rick to the show. Welcome, sir. Hi, how are you today, Tanya? It's a pleasure to have you there, sir. Oh, you know what? Financial literacy is really important. I think I never really studied it until I started learning about cash flow and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But this is not about me. I want to, uh, you know, allow you sure. to introduce who you are, sir. And, you know, tell us maybe what's one financial lesson you wish you had learned earlier in life? Oh, um, start paying attention to the foundations of financial independence earlier in my life. And what I mean by that is um, there are things that uh, you can do that are benefited by one thing that, for instance, I'm not going to tell you my age, but I'm far enough along that there are many people that have something that I don't have, more time. And so a 20, 25, 30, 35-year-old has time for these principles and elements to work for you. And, and uh, it's important to start thinking about that uh, as, as early as possible. And that's not to say that later in life, nothing can be done because all, something can always be done. It's just with time, we have more of a cumulative effect. We can talk a little bit more about that and things like rules of 72 compounding, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And I you know, you know, Mr. Rick has, uh, we had connected through a networking event but the funny thing is about Mr. Rick, he was, he was telling me he should share this book called How Your Money Works. And um, if you can see, it's on his screen as well. But the thing is, before I met Rick, I had already read this book before. And so when he was sharing the book, it was like interesting. It's like, oh my God, we connected, we connected because he, we, had, we had the same book. And it was funny because you share information about you know, I read a little bit about the book and I definitely say if anybody get the book, you know, read about it because um, just financial literacy is important to building, you know, it's a it's a, mi- a mindset of wealth and it doesn't really sometimes have to do with, um, I mean, money does play into it, but you and I were talking about the mentality that comes with it. So how important is financial literacy really to, to you know, not just like your financial goals or something like that, but your mindset, how important is financial literacy to building a better mindset? Um, Well, you know, in life in general, if somebody, and I'm going to use a strong word here, is ignorant of something, for instance, if you don't feel well, a doctor tells you something gives you a a preliminary diagnosis or says it could be this or it could be that. And if you're somewhat ignorant, which most of us are, we're not all doctors, right? (laughs) Um, You know, all of a sudden we run to the internet and we start going, oh, let me see what are the symptoms here? What are the treatments? Oh my Lord. Oh, you know, and it, it, it creates a bit of a panic and some people kind of shut down. Um, There, there are several ways to Part of that is, it, I refer to it as life risk, okay? There's all sorts of risks. Uh, there's rewards, but there's, there's all sorts of risks in life. And, you know, if we stay on that little illness analogy, you know, there's a risk of, of becoming ill. Um, and if we're, if we're ignorant of how to approach it, we can become um, panicked. And there are several ways you can handle risk. You can ignore it. 
how does that work out? Uh, you can um, deal with it yourself, run to the internet, start getting all your own solutions to fix whatever you think it is, or you can help offset or offload some of that risk by employing, uh, uh, well, in this case, medical professionals to help you get on a course or, you know, it could be wellness people and, and uh, you know, it could be simple exercise and whatever. So it's bringing in tools at an appropriate time early enough that you can take care of those issues. So back to the financial side, uh, many people go through life and face it, we're, we're all busy. And you know, people who are entrepreneurs, who build their own businesses, who, uh, who do work for companies, large companies, you have responsibilities. Um, if you are part of a household with a significant other, um, chances are both significant people have their own uh, jobs and careers. Well, then if you add into the mix some dependents, and that could be children, could be other family members, uh, could be pets, uh, could be the horses in the stall, whatever it is, you have additional responsibilities. Now, amongst all that, and I'll just use kids because I had some and, and uh, three of them went through uh, sports as well as other activities. And there was a time in, in our life, uh, my wife and Ann, you know, we were running back and forth just to try to meet their schedules. And so where was that share of mine that said, well, you know, I better sit down and I, I better look at my financial status and so on. How I got that awakening was through my dad. Uh, my dad and mom were depression era kids. And so they, they grew up with uh, kind of a standard and ethical and behavioral standard. You know, savings to them was life. And so we never wanted for anything, but we weren't very, you know, we weren't real extravagant. We were middle class, had a wonderful life, did wonderful things, had nice homes to live in and so on and so forth. Um, but after uh, I was, I don't know, 48 years old or so, my dad had semi-retired. Uh, he was still doing side gigs, what we would call it today. Um, and he called each of us, my siblings, individually up to when we visited them, called us into his little office. And, sat, and now with me, he sat down, took out two, three ring binders. And he started to open up. These are things that you need to know where they are and what they consist of, because your mom and I are not going to be here forever. Oops, <laughs> bang. That was the first little dose of reality. Sure, I'd kind of thought about it. I had my own brushes with mortality, but this was a little more real. So he went through there and he showed me here are the wills, here are the trusts, here are the accounts, here's the investments, here's where the, the lawyer did the wills, uh, here's the uh, investment advisor, uh, here's the insurance, uh, the insurance guy, here's the long-term care insurance. Uh, and uh, by the way, here's the funeral plan. And he looks at me and he goes, don't change it. And I went, okay. And then he says to me, your mom and I want you to be our medical power of attorney. And I went, that, if I understand correctly, that means and we talk pretty plainly with each other. So you want me to be the guy to pull the plug. And he looked at me and went, exactly. Bang. Reality two. Reality three was seeing all the elements my dad and mom had put into place and had ready to go. Now they had a great advantage, several actually. One is in the houses they bought and sold, they never uh, had to sell for less than they bought it for. So they made capital gains on each house, which they either invested in the next one, well they did. And so they built up equity and, and wealth through property. And by the way, uh, when they finally disposed of the house for the final time, at that time, they did not have to pay the capital gains on all the houses that they had sold. We don't have that opportunity today. That's changed. Um, the other opportunity that they had was uh, all the, mar they were in the longest bull market ever recorded in, in, in the stock markets and bond markets. And so all their investments just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew, which was great. Uh, the other large thing that they had was he had a career with a company for over uh, 40 years. So he retired with a pension. 
He retired with long-term care insurance in place, life insurance in place. And then of course he had his little side gig going on. Um, my dad passed away fairly quickly. My mom lived on for four or five years after that. She had a long decline, but my mother, because of the preparation that they had done in their life, never wanted for anything. She could go anywhere she wanted. She had all the, the medical care, the long-term care and everything she needed to have a comfortable, dignified, safe life. Hey there, podcast listeners. Are you a woman who's passionate about empowerment, ready to make your mark in the world? Join our empowering community. We bring incredible women together, foster mentorship, and uplifting each other. In our community, we help women like you break free from confusion, feeling unstuck, and rediscover their purpose, passion, and voice. Together, we build a network of strong, empowered female leaders changing the world for the better. Don't miss out. Tune in now and be a part of our inspiring community. Join today and start your journey to empowerment. So through all this, and especially at that moment when my dad was showing me those elements, I, I looked at myself in my inner mirror. I said, I don't have, the, I don't have most of this stuff in place. I got some insurance. I got some savings. There's, you know, I was working for a company that had no retirement plan. I've never worked for a large company that had a traditional pension. In fact, probably only 4% of the companies, uh, the 500 big, biggest corporations in the country, maybe 4% still have traditional retirement programs. They're all uh, now contribution programs. Read that as 401k or something similar. Mm -hmm. So now the onus of, of, of supplying a, a retirement income is now primarily off the companies and it is on the individuals. Right go back to that point that we were talking about that how much time do you have to pay attention to that stuff? Well, a lot of people find out and then they get to an older age and they go, Hmm, maybe I ought to start thinking about this. So um, it's something that needs to be a, a, a lifelong habit. It needs to be started, you know, as, as soon as you can spare a few minutes to start working those things uh, together and, and pull the elements together. Right. Right. Well, again, Mr. Rick has already been dropping nuggets, uh, talking about preparation. We're about the halfway mark and we're talking about, look, we're going to, um, again, let me pause for a moment because I'm getting so caught up in that conversation that if you've enjoyed what he's been dropping already and you've been picking up, please follow up with a, a like down there, maybe follow up with a comment because really talking about, it's sort of like what you said, it's like um, assessing your risk and where you want to maybe leave your family. And I will say, I, I, I don't know if it, and I wouldn't say it's based on age because anybody can start preparing, like, like you said. Yes. But it's like, I, I'm, when, when, I guess, when is preparing um, the right time? Is there ever a, a great time to start preparing? I guess, do you get a lot of those kind of questions? Like, when should I start preparing for this? You want the simple short answer? <laughs> no, you can give whatever answer you like there, sir. Well, I'll do the simple short answer first now. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, there's a concept called compounding. And so if you are uh, invested uh, and you have money in something uh, and it has the ability to grow, well, if you leave it in there, you know, $100 makes 10% one year, you now have 110. The next year it makes 10%, you now have, uh, you know, $121 because that $10 that was in, from gain the year before now has earned another 10%. So it uh, continues to build like that. And uh, there's an old story and I'm not gonna get the exact numbers here, but, but somebody was offered, I can give you a million dollars now or I'll give you a penny a day for the next 30 days, uh, uh, a penny uh, compounded every day, okay? So first day it's one penny, the next day it's two pennies, the next day it's four pennies and, that, and so on and so forth. And if you work out that math, eventually you will make more money out of those pennies than you will out of that initial lump right. of money. So, so that's kind of the lesson here. Um, uh, you know, th the issue that a lot of us have uh, is 
uh, to have what, what we kind of call the, the, the great American dream. And this is a little dated, so please excuse me on that. But, you know, the American dream was kind of, uh, you know, um, husband, wife, or, you know, two significant partners, uh, two and a half children, a house, two cars, some vacation time, and a comfortable life and, you know, a steak dinner, you know, once a week or something. Well, if you add up all that uh, in today's dollars, that's going to be in excess of $162,000 a year to pay for that. The average household income in the United States is something like $64,000 a year. Think that's a gap? Yeah. How do we make that up? A lot of us use credit cards or credit so that we can get what we need. And it could be not, you know, I, I, want, I need a vacation. No, you want a vacation. You may need a set of four tires, right? You may need a new roof on the house. Um, you need food. Uh, you need to pay the rent or the mortgage. So uh, there are needs and there are wants, and you have to kind of understand where you are on that. And then you have to match, uh, you know, the income to meet or exceed the outgo. Um, so it's it's uh, kind of interesting to uh, to help people realize that. And when I work with people. Uh, I'll help them analyze that and find out what they've got in place, what they don't have in place. Uh, and then, you know, I ask them, you know, give me an idea of what your monthly expenses are. And I'll even give them worksheets so they can go through and tally it up. And most of the time, I'll say, okay, well, look, you have an income of, uh, you know, four forty five hundred dollars a month. Um, and you, it looks like you have expenses of about $3,200 a month. So that leaves a pretty good gap of money that you can be putting into investments, uh, security things, and so on and so forth. And um, they look at me and go, no, at the end of the month, we have no money left over. Well, there's a hole in your bucket somewhere that we need to find. We need to help you patch that and understand where things are going and so on. Um, so it's, it's, it's a process, and, and that's the kind of process that, that, that can begin. So let, let me talk about something real quick. First of all, I want to talk about this book, How Money Works. The subcaption here is stop being a sucker, okay? Now, we're not trying to insult anybody, but what we are talking about is, you know, when you go, go into a bank and you deposit your $10,000 because you get a nice little inheritance or whatever it is, Say, I'm going to put that in the bank because it's safe. That's great. And they give you a sucker for your money. And then on the credit card you got through the bank, they're charging you 15%. Wait a minute. You're going to make 1%, 2, 2% now these days on a savings account, maybe. Uh, and you're paying 15% for your credit. Your car loan, maybe seven and a half, you know, whatever. Um, so the bank's very happy to give you a lollipop for your troubles. Um, but the, the issue is if that's all you're making in your money, you are actually losing money because there's something we call inflation, which is a big deal right now. Historically, over a long period of time, it's nowhere near what it is right now. Um, uh, but, you know, for planning purposes, you know, my industry has been using 3% per year as kind of a thumbnail. It was actually lower than that for 10 years or more previous to this run up in the inflation now. So that'll bring the averages up back to three or something. So, uh, you know, we have to deal with that. All of a sudden, even on just inflation, we're losing money. And never mind if it's not a qualified account, you're paying taxes on it also. Okay. So these are the little things that you start looking at and you start making people understand. But there's one more concept I want to get across here. Ask yourself, what is the most important financial asset that you have in your life? Now, the answers I get, because I, I can't hear your responses, but they, the, the answers that I typically get, oh, well, my house, or, you know, I, I, I had one guy say my guitar collection. Um, now, one person, uh, uh, husband and wife were in the room together, and the husband didn't hear the financial side. He said, well, my imp most important asset, it's my wife. I said, very PC of you. I said, but I'm going to disagree with all of that. Your biggest asset, your most important financial asset is your ability to make income. Because without that, 
you don't have health care, you don't have a house, you don't have food, you don't have your guitar collection, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you need to have income to make those things happen as well as income that can be put away because on up to retirement, somebody's paying you. After retirement, you are paying you. Hey there, do you love podcasts? If so, you're in the right place. By subscribing to our podcast for only $1.99 a month, you'll gain access to commercial-free video episodes with engaging and thought-provoking content while at the same time showing your support and appreciation. With regular episodes that cover a wide range of topics, you're sure to find something that interests you. Plus, subscribing is quick and easy. Just hit that subscribe button now and never miss an episode. Join our community of podcast lovers and get ready to be entertained, informed, and inspired. And again, thank you for listening. Well, that's great. If you're retired age 65 and people are going older than that, like me. Um, the, the average age that uh, people will go to, I mean, you know, it's anywhere between 82 and 88 years old right now. And it actually has been going up, retracted slightly because of COVID, but medical professions are very good at extending our life. Um, we have issues because a lot of people have uh, issues that, their body is fine, but their mind is not. And that's going to cost money to take care of. Uh, so you end up, you know, after retirement, you may have to prepare for 25, 30 years of paying yourself. So figure out how much money that you want per year at retirement. And you could even do it in today's dollars and then we can, you know, apply some inflation to it. But multiply that times 25 and look at the number that you really should have in place uh, for retirement. But what happens if something happens to you and that income is not available to your family? Well, that's a problem because making up somebody's income these days is not easy. You know, so if each spouse is making $60,000 a year, all of a sudden $60,000 goes out the window. Well, now that one spouse has a $120,000 budget that she only has $60,000 to pay for. So it's... Um, and, you know, I say she because uh, the numbers say us men are going to die first. And I, I tell my wife, you're killing me, darling. <laughs> she says, slowly. <laughs> so um, these are all concepts and things that we talk about in this book. And, and look, there are seven pieces of a good financial foundation, seven blocks. I'll read them real quick. Financial education, which is kind of where we're starting today. And there's, there's ways to do more of that. Proper protection, that's protecting that income, protecting other things. Uh, emergency fund, that's having some cash on hand that when you need those four tires, you don't have to use a credit card. Uh, debt management, well, that goes back to credit cards, uh, today's student loans, and so on. Uh, cash flow, that's money in, money out. Do you have more money in than you got going out? Uh, building wealth, that's where money starts working for you uh, in building. And then protect that wealth, protect it either for your heirs. Protect it for yourself in uh, you know a long life after retirement. Right, right, yeah. Like, like I said, if for those who are, are interested in learning about getting a copy, of this book I actually like I said is a really easy read. It's got some really great graphics and keeps you. It's really uh, um, great. It breaks it down like you said the rule of seventy two. I actually understood it a little bit better once I read the book. So get a chance. We're going to talk about how to get a, get your hands on the copy. But before we get there, I want to. Um, and ask Mr. Rick, what's the one thing you want everybody to take away from this interview from today? It, it's kind of where we started. When is a good time to start working on this? And, and the answer is today, it's now. Uh, whether you start thinking about it, you start assembling the paperwork that you do have, understand what you have in place. It could be get a financial professional to help you. Uh, you know. There are great financial professionals out there, uh, and they're honest and, and, and ethical people. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of regulations and things that we have to comply to uh, that help us toe that line. Yeah, there's some bad apples, but, you know, they get weeded out. 
But for most of us, we can find somebody who can be of assistance. And you need to look at not only investments and savings, but you need to look at things like uh, life insurance, long-term care insurance. Uh, by the way, long-term care is your biggest threat to your estate over the long haul because it's so expensive. So anyway, on, on that. So, you know, today is a good time to start. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rick. It's been a pleasure. And I, my last question for you, well, actually, I got probably two for those who, who do tune into the show every day. Yeah. Um, my one question is, where can we find more information about you, your services, and maybe possibly how can they find this book if they want to follow up with you to get more information? Well, I have a website and uh, it's, uh, well, well, let me make sure I get it right. Uh, www dot how money works dot com front slash rick shively r i c k s h i v like victory e l y and that will bring you to a website that it says how money works and there's some contact information at the bottom uh, but you can also call me you want my phone number and all that if you'd like to give it up, sure. if not, because I said I'll put the contact information in the, the, the description. So, OK, well, yeah, do that. Uh, uh, there's a website uh, that's also uh, wealthwave.com uh, front slash Rick Shively. My email is uh, Rick Shively at wealthwave.com. Um, you get that Wealthwave theme going through the whole thing. And on that <laughs> website, by the way, you can look at a lot of these subject matters. You can do some self-education. Uh, there's also a quiz that you can take. And I didn't even talk about this. There's a quiz you can take with five questions. Uh, when that was originated years ago, 72% of people could not answer three or more of those questions cor correctly. Well, in a lot of schools, that's a failing grade. And we right. call that financial illiteracy. That's what we're trying to help. And I would like to help all of you. Again, thank you so very much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Again, Absolutely. make sure you check out this book, How Your How Money Works. And again, connect with Mr. Rick Shively. Yeah, if they connect uh, with me, you... I, I can give them a copy of the book. Okay. And also, I also want to remind everybody that, oh, I didn't ask my unofficial question. Uh, would you be willing to come back and have another deeper dive conversation? Absolutely. I mean, and I don't know if you do this, but if you get feedback and people have questions, we can try to address those. Yes, yes, yes. So if that's another great thing. So I want to uh, wrap up here with, with Mr. Rick and say thank you, sir, for sharing your insight, and your wisdom with us. It's been a pleasure having this conversation. Pleasure to see you again. And I want to also remind everybody who tuned in today's episode, remember that feedback is always welcome. Remember, if you have any information or you have some follow up, you know, follow up with our um with the contact information that we have down below. Again, Mr. Rick's information will be posted down in the description box. So please make sure you check it out down there in the Juicy Gems. Again, if you've enjoyed Rick's uh, information and you've picked up some gems, hit that like button down there uh, and maybe... <laughs> And if you want to continue getting some of the great insight, like Mr. Rick and other great guests that we have today, please make sure you hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we will see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.